A fucking guy with a $150 fucking YouTube camera and a fucking $10 tripod has to tell the tale. You know, a few people, a housewife in Michigan behind a keyboard has to tell the tale for the exception. But this was right in your face. Shepard Smith went on this ran off Fox. Yeah, we knew, but we couldn't prove it. What do you mean you couldn't prove it? What do you got to do to prove it? What, what are you talking about? The proof was right in your fucking faces. Fucking malice liars. Oh, every one of them ought to be fucking hung. They ought to be fucking tied up, set on fire, skinned alive, and fucking hung like Mussolini. You know how people these fuckers killed? And you all went away along with it. You know what? I kept a list. I know who all of you are. ABC, NBC, CBS. We all ain't no Reuters. The fucking Queens fucking on a leash. Politicians. Every single politician. You watch my interview right here with Mike Lee. Oh, I'll get right with White. I mean, it's so outrageous that they did this to us, to our children, to our family, to future generations. Fifteen nuclear reactors in the Ukraine. Plutonium wars going on over there? Oh, yeah. They'll strike a deal, Obama, Putin, the Queen. Yeah, because they're all on the same team. This is the same inbred royal family. 1914, 2014, same gig. Same gig. Except this time, their weapon's plutonium. Yeah, the United States started out as a molasses war, then a tea war, cocaine cowboys war, now it's plutonium. Oh, free market fairy tales in you body and all you freaking Fox Connors went along like a bitch on a leash. Oh yeah, we're gonna get a gun, go to the freaking range, shoot our Glock, we're gonna get some gold, hey, we're mad, we're fired up. Yeah, 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 you free market, you protectionists, oh, you're bad, you're bad, you protectionists. Yeah, we're gonna sell our goods to China. Yeah, those fuckers that make 37 cents a day buy a lot of your goods. All they did was take your fucking job. That's what they took. Now you and your wife are both working 65 hours a week to have what your parents had working one in 40 hours a week. But you're all for it. Who'd ever believed it? And now they're coming out and saying, oh yeah, they were lying to us. No, you were lying to us. Just like when I was at Livermore Lab. I'm looking at the signs. Let's put the signs on the other side of the fucking fence. The media needs to put their fucking signs on the other side of the fucking fence. Uncle Tom's, oh yeah, the Uncle Tom media, the Uncle Tom marine biologist, this story's not going away. It goes up in cycles and dies down. It's not, it's gonna grow and grow and grow forever. You know, the waste, yeah, we're gonna catch it in the tank. What are you gonna do, build fucking tanks forever? Oh, we got fucking answers for the waste. Yeah, Hanford proves that one to us. We said all along about Hanford. How can you hypothesize future generations, what they're, how they're gonna handle it? Bechtel, right in your face, comes right on, does an interview, says, yeah, we were paid to build the triple layer tanks at Hanford. We, they're still single layer, and they're leaking into the aquifer. Oh, God, we can't figure out these birth of hex down river from Hanford. We can't figure out these birth of hex from Fukushima. As the Pacific Genocide, it's not even just Fukushima. It's Hanford. Oh, yeah, we robbed you. You paid us. But fuck you. Ha, 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 ha. See? Because white collar crime is totally illegal. Why? Because we played ball. Before, we've always relied on that fourth pillar. Yeah, they don't have to do it. Nobody with integrity, but when they intentionally downplay and use the media as a weapon, that's what they did. They used, Fox, Con News, CNN, ABC, they were used as a weapon against us. They brought in expert after expert, as I said in the early days. Not one, and then the anti-nuclear establishment, they played ball, they didn't protect us. I mean, you think about it, when I was first reporting this, Gunderson was in my site the first day. I have all the emails from Gunderson. He was telling me just like Fox News said. He was telling me, no, Kevin, you're wrong. This is a hydrogen blast. This is all this hydrogen. Stafford Smith must have read Gonderson's report because that's what he was saying. I'm like, are you fucking crazy? This is a 9 4 earthquake. This fucking reactor is cracked and gone. Long before a tsunami hit. Fuck. Helen Caldecott. Oh, the Japanese are tidy little people. They'll clean it up. That's so grotesque. It's racist. It's obscene. Massive, massive protests in the streets all over the world. So a guy told me today, well, France doesn't have a part with it. This is a neo, neocon on the right. And I said, boy, right out of Michael Moore's words, he said the same thing, standing on the stage with Pandora's promise. Really, France doesn't have a problem with it. Huh. Germany sure does. And I says, okay. Yeah, he says, why are they building? Should have never built one on the freaking falls of the coast. What about the Elbow Canyon? What about San Onofre? What about them all through? The United States, we have earthquakes, tornadoes all the time, and Chernobyl wasn't an earthquake. Chernobyl was human air. Oh. Oh. Oh, there's no answer for the waste. Oh. None. 
Oh yeah, build bombs and weapons so they can point it at you. It's outrageous. The so-called anti-nuclear establishment betrayed us. The environmentalist establishment betrayed us. The fucking media betrayed us. The politicians of the day betrayed us. Our neighbors betrayed us. Our family, our friends betrayed us. Nobody, nobody. I can't believe it. I'm blown away. Three fucking years later, three fucking years I stood right here screaming my fucking hands off. Three years. I said it right here three years ago. Go fucking crazy every fucking day. With a fucking hundred dollar fucking camera and a ten dollar fucking 1953 tripod. Wow. Wow, I knew fucking this country was gone, but after three years, the leukemia fight, everything. It's amazing. Jan Brooks said it best to me one day. She called me up and says, Kevin, it's pretty sad. The guy fighting for his life, leukemia, and a housewife in Michigan. We have to turn ourselves into quantum physicists. We have to take up biochemistry, journalism, nuclear physicists is a hobby. Well, sure ain't no hobby, Jan. You know that. Full-time jobs with us. It's pretty amazing. I'm blown away. I always thought at some point we'd get a platform. A guy like me, they'd have a round table and, you know, throw a false equivalency guy at me and we could have a little nice discussion. Not one serious, good, grassroots, anti-nuclear really is anti, not one, anywhere. Nobody ever gave us the field and we were fucking right. Dead on fucking right. I was dead on right every single word. I'm glad I did it radically and intensely with my language. You know? It was an acute situation, and I was screaming like an acute situation, like my cancer, and I tried everything, but it didn't work, and the new norm, Goffman called it. They'll 1090 you, the new norm. Oh, I'm gonna die young of cancer. My family's gonna die young of cancer. My future grandchildren are gonna die young of cancer. Oh well, oh well, the new norm. I'll finish with this. I wrote this. 30 year anniversary of the death of, I dedicated it to my dad. I wrote this the 30th anniversary of the killing of John Lennon, I believe, when this madness started. I see post ignorance as a pure art movement in the concept of art itself, and the concept of art is culture, and the concept that people are culture, and the concept that inspiration influence our great historical artists, like Van Gogh and Millet, like Pollock's reference to Kedinsky, like Monet's to the sunlight, morning, dawn, Winter, fall, summer, spring. It is influenced by the invokeness of the time. My look at culture and art thereof as today, economic theory, popular culture, art, or more reality, the lack thereof art. The mind of seeing when others for some cognitive reason do not see. Everyone saw light from millenniums. Everyone saw a simple light from millenniums. Everyone saw a collected color from millenniums. It is more per se than the artist. Monet saw the light. Millet saw the struggle. Van Gogh saw the line. Smithson saw the simplicity of the line, the shape against the landscape. Kaninsky saw the election of color and shape. Pollock saw the color of dynamics in motion. But much more than that, they saw decades ahead of the truth. Their minds saw fact and truth. Their minds were strong enough to act upon which they understood. When all others did not understand, not yet. They had strong backs and knew how to work. They were the purification of ambition, intelligent education, smooth with work ethic. I visualized for over two decades. Now, via my hawk and trowel, via my keyboard, via my paintbrush, via my cardboard three-door throwaway camera, via my flip video camera, my soapbox YouTube, via my websites is this. Poetic injustice to the entire world. Wars without provocation, pain without a crime. Love without an artistic spirit. Ignorance with a club, big club. As a counter, what I have termed neo-ignorance is post-ignorance. I post ignorance like this. As a movement in a pure intellectualism, in a broad intellectualism. Not I know art history, not I know how to draw like a camera, not I know how to interpret, not I know how to incorporate, but I know culture, I know environments in the more exposed manner. I know economics, I know geopolitics, I know metaphors, good and bad, I know struggle, I know what it feels like to be stolen in wealth, mind, and artistic, and benevolent. Now I know that on Balco. That was before I got cancer and I was financially wiped out. The chemo, yeah, I did a number on my eyes. You now I have some scarring down the outside of my legs and the bottom of my fit. I have some serious issues from it. You know, it burned a hole through the one side. You know, it, it's been a crazy experience for me. Intense experience for all of us. You know, and I would have never believed it. As I said over and over, I step back like my favorite artist, Malay. And I view from the broader perspective. Oh boy, have an eye on this. And oh boy, as I said in the early days, I stood right here 
Don't believe the media. They're lying, they're lying. If you do believe the media, remember this. When they pinned medals on Jessica Lynch, when they told you Pat Timmel was fighting off Al Qaeda, freaking went down waving his flag on him, was executed style, murdered by the apparatus there be. I went on turn and I went when Colin Powell was lying to you, he has what you know I went on it. That was three years ago. Three years ago. And look at that black t-shirt, I'll tag it. Look who's on that t-shirt. Wow. Yeah, I've thought about Pollock a lot through this three years. I thought about Warhol a lot. As you know, I flipped the can behind my back over and over. And like my cancer treatment, I had to be perfect. This YouTube thing, I've had to be flawless. And I've been pretty flawless. I've made very few mistakes on this. It's pretty amazing. With no news desk, no editors, no, you know, apparatus like media has, no money. You know, they have entire news desks. I've done this all, you know, on a shoestring, on a prayer, yeah. Oh boy, on a prayer. It's pretty amazing. Three years later, I tagged a video the other day I put up that I did three years ago, right after it happened. And I forgot I had it, and I put it up and I could tell. Went out to subscribers and they thought I did it that day. Why wouldn't you? As Dave Parrish did this great piece on me, Groundhog Day. Yeah, I've been a broken record and everyone says, why do you keep doing this over and over and over? Because there's new people that come into this every day. New people, and this is a strange genre, YouTube. You know, it's not like a book you can read from beginning to end. You know, you could do that, but that's a, a lot of videos, but. New people come in and they have to be, and this, this will go on for decades. New people will come in. Fukushima is ongoing. They've done nothing. Three full core meltdowns out of control. And never forget this. Why there's three four cup meltdowns indoor? The WIPP, the race depository in New Mexico, is leaching for the first time, picking up plutonium. Hanford's leaking into the aquifer. We got small level problems going all over. There's a war going on over the Ukraine with 15 nuclear reactors. At the same time, all this should have been the end of nuclearism. Absolutely, it should. At the same time, this was going on, the first nuclear reactor, 30 years being built in the United States. Fact, there's no answer for the waste. More bombs. Fact, they're surely not safe. And I'll end it like this, the bottom line. What the fuck don't you understand about Chernobyl? What the fuck do you not understand about Fukushima? It kills you. And it will kill. You've been 1090. Oh, well, yeah, you're right. It's in the food. It's in the water, honey. Oh, uh, let's go to Vegas. Oh, yeah, honey. You got a new car? Yeah. What's our checkbook like, honey? Well, you know, we're gonna have to refinance the house again. Again? Yeah, I'm glad they keep this interest rate at zero. Keep stimulating the economy for it. Yeah, oh yeah. It's the new norm. Death via cancer, the new norm. So fucking arrogant that you don't give a fuck about your own children, your own grandchildren, your unborn great grand let alone the birds, the trees, and the environment. It's a pathetic commentary on this society that a guy like me had to do this the whole time. On an island? Oh yeah, never did get a platform, none of us. Christina, Jan, none of us. They were all over this conception. And now they have the guts to come out and say, oh, see, we told you. They should be tied up, skin, hung, Rupert, all of them, all that there be. This should be Mussolini, every one of them. It's beyond treason. It's the greatest crimes against humanity I believe ever committed in the history of humanity. Stand tuned.